No gunshots herald his approach. No trademark left behind him when he leaves. The kid has had his fill of notoriety in days gone by, and plenty of empty boots can surely testify. Some say he travels alone. That's the dead eye kid. Haunting Melody, Episode 3. There you are. I have just witnessed the most appalling... Did we really see what I think we just saw? I'm afeard so. That varmint taking advantage of a knife... She didn't look put out to me. Any fired up on her part weren't the angry kind, if you catch me. Oh, so you saw too. How useful am I? Mighty useful. To know that something's up with them. Looked like they knowed each other afore this. I guess you could safely say that. I tactfully took my leave. Who in Tarnation? Nation? Damn! What? That's Clyde Wishwell and his boy. Wishwell. Mr. Cartland, I hope you don't mind the intrusion. What do you want? We found a fellow lost on our property. Uh, claims he's supposed to be coming here. We decided to give him an escort. Yes, yes, many thanks. You may go ahead and leave. Who the devil are you? You sent for me. He was mighty tight about his business with you, Mr. Cartland. I am uh, right curious. That is between Mr. Cartland and myself. Are you waiting around for a reason? I could... No need, sir. I reckon a man does you a good turn, seeing you to your destination rather than shooting your backside full of buckshot as a trespasser. He deserves a bit of an explanation. Yeah, explain. Very well. I am the ghost expert you sent for. Doctor, is everything all right in there? Yes, quite. I have all I need for the moment. Is your husband nearby? He had to step out. Ah. I have a guest room ready for you. Your driver can bunk with the man. My, oh, yes, uh, that fellow, uh, my guide. I, is she, is she going to be all right, sir? I think this will take some time, but yes, I, I believe she can be saved. Saved? Well, you talk like she's ailing. She is. It is an ailment of the soul. Why am I all of a sudden smelling a rat? You mean the Sullivan's obvious familiarity with young Miss Heath? Biggest rat I've seen recently. You think they got something on between them? I'm wondering, has anyone actually clapped eyes on the fellow she got her heart pinned to? How'd you hear about that? Damn. I just hear things. Oh, but it was one of the Wishwells that she was a-hankering after. And the Wishwells just rode in. Perhaps we should go and take a look at the other side of this little chess match. Let's go get us a look at the wish wells. Right. Oh, I'll stay in the house. Keep an eye on the courting. You're the expert. Now who the devil we got inside? Ever! Well, I can't help you there. I'm no clairvoyant. Merely a seeker after truth in the field of spiritual. Really? What is it? <laughs> oh! Company. They ain't company, these wish wells. Get that city slicker out here. We got a bit of a Brandon problem here. Are you implying there's someone here claiming to be me? Someone here is claiming something, but I ain't sure which of you it might be. I have credentials and letters of recommendation. That's Ezekiel Wishwell in the tan hat. He's a big rancher over the other side of the valley. And if one of his marries that miss inside... Reckon he'll get his hands on her half of the ranch here. You sent off for a ghost hunter? And you can't even remember his name? I contacted him through some damn psychical society in the newspaper out of Carson City. Yes, precisely. The friends in passing. It's bad enough I gotta do a damn fool thing like that so I can put my wife's mind at rest about her damn fool sister. Here he is. You needed me for something? What you gonna do with two of them? Two of who? Is that the imposter? Well, what? it's the doggonest thing I ever heard of. It's a wonder, sure enough. They have vacated the, um, <clears throat> bedroom. You think there's gonna be a fight? Don't know that them two guys could make much of a scrap. That first one's too prissy and citified. The other's kind of a runt. But it might be something to see. I need a chance to palaver. This might explain the idiotic views of Sullivan. I mean, if he is an imposter. 
People can be thick as two thumbs and still ain't liars. Happens all the time. What's that? Trying to logic out which might be the one supposed to be here. Oh, there's the girl. I am an ordained minister, sir, of the Church of the Holy Seekers after Truth. That hackabow! They wouldn't know a phantom from an apparition. I have trained with the most respectable societies in the British Isles. High bound, stick in the mud. Fangled, snot nosed infants. Infants. Tampering with forces outside of your ken. I'll have you know I. Stop! Stop, please! Please! Stop! Ah! Stop! Quickly, give me some tea and a cold compress if you have one. Yes. Stay oh, back! Please. The girl is under attack. Stop. Looks like some kind of Stop. fit. Stop. Fit a temper. You get up, girl. Mr. Cartland, Mike, could I drop a word in your ear? Uh, who the hell are you? All right. You come in with the preacher. Maybe, preacher. Something you need to know. Are you planning to tell him about the assignation? He'll do something terrible to that poor girl. You've seen how beastly he is to her. I know you're looking after the best interests of your family here. He threatened to beat her. I'll do what I gotta do. Even if she is feigning all of this, surely she doesn't deserve... And I can tell you're pretty near your wit's end. Oh, is that so? I think you done took more than most men can take. So I don't fault you none for flying off the handle. I might could have an answer for all this. Really? Yep. It was something that Sullivan fellow said regarding the Bible. What? Once they get this little dust-up sorted... Maybe I could try something. What you planning? I promise you, I don't reckon no one will get hurt. Leastways, not bad. But beyond that, can't tell you much or it'll fall flat. Is this some kind of this spiritual hoodoo manure? Well, let's say I'm going to connive them into believing it is. Oh. <laughs> you go on, then. Oh, she's settled again, but she keeps tossing and a turning. If I'm right and she's just doing this all out of pique, what do you think should be done? You really think us going on and giving in is gonna really make everything all right? Me? Uh, but it's too drastic to be... I ain't asking if you think she's a making it all up. Just what you reckon we should do if she is. Oh, well... It's a terrible thing she's doing, if she's doing it. But it can't be easy on her either, all them hurts she took. Lot of effort to make you feel sorry for her. If she's faking, wouldn't the Reverend know it? Stick to the question at hand. You're much less riled than you've been in days. Do you know something? With two doctor taps on hand, how can I not see a light at the end of this here tunnel? Oh. I'm a-waiting. I agree. We can't, in good conscience, let her get her way through these kinds of shenanigans. Always assuming that she... Yeah, yeah, we're assuming. But what can we do for punishment? Lock her away? Oh, I couldn't bear that. What you think about schooling? What? Well, sending her off to school, back east, or somewheres where rich folks send their girls. And we could take uh, the cost of the schooling out of her half of the ranch. We could call it bail. It w would keep her away from the wish whales, and it would get her away from... Us? Yes. I may not have the book learning y'all have, but I did have me a granny who did midwifing and could see and talk to all manner of spirits. Really? How rusty. You should never poo-poo the lay folk. They have toiled in the fields of the supernatural without even realizing they did. Of course, it is only a pity that so often they were seen as enemies of the church and persecuted rather than embraced and put to good work. Good God, they're even worse than harmony. Well, Granny once told me of a sure cure for a plague of spirits. Oh, yes? Watch out, he'll write a monograph on your Granny. Did you really have one? Of course. It ain't easy and it ain't exactly safe. But when the only other path is being ridden round with spirits all your life... It's sometimes a risk you gots to take. Dangerous? You gotta make the spirits flee out of the afflicted one, and the only way to do it is to convince them you're about to kill that person. Kill? That makes a strange sort of sense. Best ways are violent. You can't sneak up behind them, since half the convincing has got to be that the one what's afflicted gots to believe. Mention the flagellants in the Bible. They used whips to close well, we themselves can't. That, that, of... That, that, that poor girl! I'm not certain I could do it myself. So I would be most interested in observing. Oh, I can do it. You two should ought to make sure no one else gets in the way, though. But you wouldn't really hurt her. I suppose it depends. Sometimes the spirits are figuring you wouldn't really hurt no one, and they hang on for the first hurt or two. Like them fillers that whip themselves bloody right there in the Bible. Oh, no. I, I can't let you do that to... 
Any poor defenseless woman. Don't think it's your choice to make, old hoss. As long as she is afflicted, it will have to be dealt with. L- let me try something else first. I, I might have a way That's to... That's right, fine. We'll come along and observe your... No, it... It has to be performed in total secrecy. Can't hide from the spirits, though. I take the hint. You should be grateful for the help. Leave me alone for a minute. I have to... to pray. What got into him? I think he truly cares for the girl. Mighty old spirit indeed. The lonely cowboy cliché, always riding out, heading yonder. Join us again in two weeks when he rides back over that far horizon. The Dead Eye Kid was written and produced by Julie Hoberson. Lemuel Roberts, the Dead Eye Kid, is J. Spider Isaacson. Fanshawe was J. Hoberson. In Haunting Melody, Dr. Sullivan was Michael Coleman of Tales of the Extraordinary. Mark Cartland was Renat LaBeouf. Mrs. Emma Cartland was Jackie Duckworth. Melody Heath was Melissa Bartell. Red was Jack Kincaid of Hodes Grimm. Hank was Mark Olson. Clyde Wishwell was Bob Noble. And Mr. Baker was Paul Green, author of the Encyclopedia of Weird Westerns at weirdwesterns.wordpress.com. Cover art is courtesy of Brett Colstock. Did I Kid opening theme music was... The wreck of the old 97 from a public domain recording from 1924 found on the Internet Archive. That's at archive.org. I'm your announcer, Old Hoss, also known as Glenn Hallstrom. Any other incidental music was by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com. Sound effects were found on SoundSnap.com, Sonomic.com, and OneSoundFX.com. Sound and mastering was done by Julie Hoverson. All persons, places, critters, and events in the story are fictitious or used in a fictitious manner that are not meant to reflect any persons, places, or things, living, dead, or otherwise. Mosey on down to our website at www.thedeadeyekid.com. This presentation is copyright 2010 to Julie Hoverson and Reality Productions. We all expect to come back now here. <laughs>